So it's about time I did another update on the workshop. So I decided to go self-employed start of this year. So I rent this space. So just recently I built this mezzanine. So that milling machine right at the end there used to be here and everything up there was somewhere around on the floor. So I managed to fit a lathe, two mills, this big old lathe and a surface grinder. Took quite a while to move all this. When I built the mezzanine, moving everything around, building the mezzanine, took literally like a month, so I didn't earn anything for a month. So I'm just catching up, tidying things up. I mean, I got a long way to go, but I'm getting there. So you might remember this milling machine. I refurbished all the electronics on it. Basically, give the machine a real good clean up. Um, but it was an 80s control and it just couldn't keep up with modern G-code. Like a lot of modern G-code uses a lot of linear moves and it just couldn't process those fast enough to actually be a fast mill. But it's got a, a gearbox head, so it'll do up to 6,000 RPM. And then the low speed's got a ton of torque on there. I think it's about 8 horsepower, this motor. It might actually be 8 kilowatts, so it's 10 horsepower. Um, I pulled the drives off it because I'm going to refurbish, well, put new drives on. Potentially new servo motors. The servos are DC. Um, AC servos are just better. But it's more expensive and this thing takes huge servo motors so I did find another option of DC servo drive the other day my experience with them is they're a pain in the ass to tune so if I can get one that self tunes that'd be excellent and I think I found that so I gotta build another control cabinet this used to have two ginormous ones on um, I left one outside because I was gonna recycle it but someone stole it so now I've got to buy another one of those, but that's just money. I mean, I need to get it done because it's got a tool changer on, which would help me a lot. So I currently use this mill. It's similar to a bridge port. It's just a lot bigger. Um, it works great. The spindles limit to 3,500 RPM, but at least it's got a two speed head. The only thing is the spindle drive is still an old fashioned, uh, AC synchronous so I have to use like floating heads if I want to do tapping which is kind of slow because it runs off this VFD which takes a, uh, a few seconds to start and stop so it's just not very fast at tapping uh, I mean that's the, the control this used to be on DC drives it just never worked properly they were really hard to get tuned and the drives that I got just never worked reliably. Um, like all of a sudden it would like lock up a servo and then delete the parameters on the drive. And then I spent like a few hours resetting it, tuning it again. And then it would work for a few months and then do the same. So I just got fed up, changed everything to AC servo drives. They're a little smaller but this machine's still got plenty of power. Uh, it's got a fourth axis, this thing weighs like 150 pounds, so I'm going to build a tiny little table just so I can lift it at waist height. I don't have to break my back every time. Obviously I need a huge clear up. Um, project I'm going to do today is make a power drawbar because currently I'm using a, an impact driver. Um, I mean originally I used to use a wrench, it's just kind of awkward, time consuming. So if I make my own power drawbar, it's gonna be just as fast as a tool changer. I just gotta change it by hand. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. Uh, my tools for it. It's kind of awkward because both machines have got different holders. So the mill I use all the time is a ISO 40. And then the other machine is a BT40, but they're actually the same tapers, it's just the ends that are different. So you can actually buy a an adapter um, 
that fits onto this one. So I can use these tools in one of my other mill, in the my main mill. I just can't ever use these in a BT40. My old lathe, I've got to restore this. The head bearings are pretty bad. I mean, I don't even think it's got regular bearings. It's probably bronze bushes in there. But that's for another day. Some tool holders I'm making for the lathe. So I've just got to do the caps on them. Lathe itself. Can't show you too much in there because there's a uh, patented tool system. So don't want to show that off. My workbench, which is an absolute mess. This is my kiln, which I'm going to use to heat treat things. Maybe. I mean, I'm going to build my own um, foundry to melt aluminium or aluminum, which is what this is going to be eventually. So this can be used for heat treating that because aluminium loses a lot of its properties. So you need to quench it and artificial age it to get those properties back. So I just got to build a control for this. Um, the old systems worked on a cone. So it'd be like a just a cone of clay, and when it hits a certain temperature, it then bends and then knocks the switch off. So that's how they regulate temperature on there. So I've got like a $50 uh, SCR and temperature regulator. Finally got a chest camera. So I've had this GoPro for ages. I just haven't used it much. Um, the SD card holder broke, so we never held the SD card in properly. You have to kind of shimmy in there with a piece of wire. And the batteries only lasted 45 minutes on this. So I 3D printed this case, it fits on there, it pushes the SD card in, and then it holds this cable in, which goes to a brick. So instead of it only lasting 45 minutes, it now lasts 12 hours. And it's got a super big, um, I think it's 256 gigabyte SD card in there. So I'm going to do more videos of actually machining things. Uh, my surface grinder. So I recently made a new mic vice for it. I didn't have a magnetic one and I just had all these parts lying around. Um, the movable part is on linear rails just so when it clamps it doesn't lift. This is movable. It actually works fairly good. Paid $300 for this whole thing, so it's probably worth that in scrap weight, but it does work. Uh, my deburring wheels, so that's actually a deburring wheel, it's like Scotch Bright, CBM for grinding tools, buffing wheel, some of my material. Then recently, I bought a dirt bike, got this $500, so it's got a new top end exhaust. Obviously needs a lot of work, but it runs great, goes through all the gears. I mean, just an example of some of the bad parts is people have used a castle nut as a spacer. I mean, actually they've used a socket as a spacer for the bag break. Um, there's no caps on the reservoirs. In fact, the oil's not even connected to the case. It's just running a premix in the tank. So I need to fix that as well. I'm gonna do a full refurb on it. I'm also going to try and increase the power. So I'm going to use the machines to billet every part, port it, all that kind of stuff. This is DT125. These only have, I think, about 17 horsepower compared to like a, a CR125, which has got close to 50. So I'm going to try and get it up there. That'll be a fun project. Billet everything. Just do something different. Uh, I mean, there's the hydraulic press project. That's uh, originally was forging. Designed all this, built it all from scratch, all the castings, everything. So that's actually going to become a molding machine eventually. Apart from that, just lots to do. That's the servo, the Z axis. So to buy an AC servo for that size is going to cost a lot of money, especially when 
mean, looking at that, that flange is probably eight inches across. It's a five kilowatt peak, uh, two kilowatt continuous. So that's a really expensive motor to replace. You might just use the old one, this one, and get DC drives, just so long as I can get one that'll self-tune. Uh, the lathe, yep, that's pretty much it. Today is gonna be the auto drawbar. So I'm gonna try and do more of these videos, more of me machining stuff. That's why I got the chest camera. I wanna do some more fun things, like some people find it interesting watching things be machined. I don't so much anymore because I've done it for quite a long time. Um, but there is other projects like there's the, the 3D printed gears, which is somewhere up there. That was a bit of a disaster because I used five gears, but it was torque that was melting the gears and I was trying to find the highest speed. So I'm going to replace like the first three or four gears with steel ones and then the last gear plastic. So at least then it can reach the high RPMs or I'll just redo it completely. I haven't decided yet. Um, another project is I've got a little generator engine. It's only like 80 cc, gives out like four, ho four horsepower. And I'm gonna build a dyno so I can test how much power it makes out and then do modifications showing how you can make more power out of a four stroke engine. And then obviously I'll do the same thing with the, the bike over there, the DT. Um, apart from that, there ain't a huge amount of projects to do. Just, I got to start making more money. So see you next time.